Fasten your seatbelts. It's going to be a bumpy night. No one thinks we have the balls to pull this off. Okay, girls. Let's go get them. Hello, and welcome to Girls on Film with the BFI at Home. I'm your host, Anna Smith, and this episode is dedicated to the upcoming BFI London Film Festival and all the fantastic female focus films on offer. My guests today are Phyllida Lloyd, who's directed a film called Herself, the great Harriet Walter, who appears in Herself, and Claire Dunn, the leading actress who also co-wrote the film. Please note that we do discuss domestic abuse in this segment and we talk about ways you can get help. First up, let's hear from Trisha Tuttle, the BFI's Director of Festivals, about this year's LFF. Well, Trisha, welcome back to Girls on Film. How is London Film Festival different this year? How is London Film Festival not different this year, Anna? It feels like the question right now. So um, I think what what is the same is obviously that great diversity of programme and films from all over the world. And, you know, there really is something for every film lover in the programme. But the way that we're getting the, um, the films out there this year is very different. Um, a big message for us this year, and it's very exciting, actually, is that wherever you are in the UK, you can experience the festival. Um, we're in cinemas and being in cinemas is very, very important to us, but we are also going to be delivering 54 virtual premieres uh, across the festival. Um, and these will be scheduled in. We're trying to maintain that sort of collective atmosphere of the festival um, with Q and A's and introductions. Um, and then the in cinemas part of the festival is a little bit different than audiences have come to expect. So we're not just at the BFI South Bank and in the West End and in London cinemas. We're working with partners all around the UK. So seven um, different towns and cities uh, around the UK from Glasgow to Belfast to Bristol, Manchester, um, really, really great regional spread. And obviously on Girls on Film, a question we always have to ask, what is the percentage of female directors in the festival this year? So overall, it's uh, just under 40%, it's 39.8%, I think this year. So good, good showing. Um, it's always something we think about. We we never, as I said to you last year, we never programmed to quotas, but we always um, we always have a list as we're making programming decisions of different beats that every film hits, what country is it from, have are we already overrepresented, who's telling this story. We always think about um, who's directing the film as well too. Now we're talking about herself today, but are there any other female directed films that you'd like to highlight? So many, so many great films. I mean, I think um, Josephine Decker's Shirley is a, a personal favourite of mine. Um, and it's uh, Elizabeth Moss playing the horror writer Shirley Jackson. Love it. Um, Miranda July is back at the festival. She's back with Gajillionaire, which is a great comedy screening in the festival. There's some really interesting horror filmmakers coming through. So I would pick um, Nat Natalie James Eric Erickson, who's an Australian filmmaker who's made a first time feature called Relic, which is in the festival. It's one of those great horror films that is um, really delivers on the scares, but also is about so much more. And this one is about um, three generations of women sort of tackling dementia and the dementia becomes almost um, uh, the, the horror of the film. I would also uh, say Talia Levy is back at the festival, um, Israeli filmmaker who joined us with her debut Zero Motivation. And she's made a film called Honey Mood. It's one of those great comedies that takes place all in one night. And it's the story of a couple on their wedding night who go back to um, their honeymoon uh, hotel room and things don't go exactly as they planned when she finds a ring in his pocket from his ex-girlfriend. Um, and it takes them on this tour of Jer Jerusalem over one night. It's really, really funny and very Efron-esque. Now, we're highlighting herself partly because we think that theme of, of domestic abuse and that issue is a really important one and also sort of tackling how women survive when they escape an abusive relationship. Is that important to you and what other causes in films are important to you that are in the festival this year? 
Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I think um, I think our closing film, Ammonite, like Francis's uh, previous film, God's Own Country, there's a socio-political subtext in here. The subtext is about the erasure of um, female scientists, thinkers, artists who have um, been written out of history. And Mary Anning certainly was. She had to be rediscovered and reclaimed, but her, her fossil discoveries made an impact um, for natural science and our understanding of of humanity's prehistory. Um, so it's really nice to see that as a sort of subtext to, um, to a film that's also a very powerful love story. My next guest is Philida Lloyd, who directed films as diverse as The Iron Lady and Mamma Mia. And she also directed Harriet Walter and Claire Dunn on stage in all female versions of Shakespeare's Julius Caesar. Her new film, Herself, features Claire Dunn as a woman fleeing an abusive husband who's determined to build a new life for herself and her daughters. Harriet Walter plays the employer and family friend who's trying to help her out. Here's Philida on Herself. Claire and I, Claire Dunn, who wrote and plays the lead in the film, we were working together. Um, our project was all set in um, a women's prison and we were doing quite a lot of work with women in prison and becoming... Uh, just more and more preoccupied by the number of women who had ended up in prison through being in abusive relationships. And when she gave the script to me to look at, she, neither of us were really thinking that I was going to direct it. I was, she was just sort of asking me what I thought. And that just began, you know, a big journey for both of us. At what point did you both decide that she should actually star in the film? Because she is fantastic, isn't she? As we got um, more and more into it, and we started talking about the possibility of my directing it, and we went to talk to various um, producers and tr trying to get it off the ground. Um, one day I heard one of them say, Claire really has written... Um, a great part for a, a major movie actress. And I just thought, yeah, herself. And at that moment, I just thought, if I direct this, um, that's gonna be, you know, th that's gonna be the deal. What you called that again? I already told you, love. I was in God's pocket. And he said, if I have to find you, I'm just gonna have to give you a little mark because there's loads, loads of Sandras in Dublin. <laughs> we can't go on being this far from the school. Just keep telling yourself it's temporary. Yeah, wow. What are we doing, Sandra? I think this is good for the girls. Ah! Ah! I'm dead as ah! I want to fix it, you know? You know, however much you may want to, there are some people who you just can't. Well, Sandra and her community build a house in the film, which is a wonderful metaphor for her rebuilding her life. Did you build the house for real? <laughs> we did. Um, it really was a logistical challenge to do what we did on, you know, a pretty low budget in five weeks. You know, we started off literally with a bare field. And, you know, you see Conleth Hill on the digger. You know, he really was the one who just put the first bit of, digger into the ground to clear clear the earth and so everything was done kind of for real but we had to keep running away and shooting other scenes while our crew you know advanced the the house to the next stage it, it was a huge sort of spiritual and you know collaborative sort of endeavor and I also think that this last six months has shown us that things do change I mean not always for the better but that change is possible and that I, I hope they'll see, you know, be inspired by seeing somebody who really does kind of literally dig themselves into a new life and how, however trapped you may feel in your domestic circumstance or in the kind of bureaucracy of the system, um, you know, there may well be a way out and somehow it's Sandra's energy and will um, to make a better life for her children that brings, you know, there is luck in it as well, as we know, but somehow she kind of makes her own, she makes her own fortune as well. Did you speak to many survivors of domestic abuse? Claire was very involved in um, women's aid in Ireland and I was more involved really in the, the criminal justice system in the UK. Um, but I hope the, the authenticity 
of the film and we wanted it to feel uh, not melodramatic, but just really truthful and particularly the impact of abuse and, and what, it, what it does to children to be in an abusive household. And as you can imagine, working with those child actors was a very delicate and at times hilarious um, experience. And they were in many ways um, almost more robust than we were about you know, some of the things that were going on and took a lot of it very much in their stride. That was Philida Lloyd. Now over to Claire Dunn, who co-wrote the film and puts in a tremendous performance in the lead role, and her co-star, Harriet Walter. I came about writing it by hearing a story from a dear friend of mine. She was a single mother with three children and she had to declare herself homeless in order to go into temporary accommodation. I just had a flash of the story, which is a woman who chooses to help herself by building her own house kind of brings a community around her and starts a new life. And um, it was sort of about bypassing the system in a way, uh, getting around it by making it all simple again. There's a com very compelling scene at the beginning when Sandra gives her daughter a code word to run and get help when her husband starts to behave aggressively. Can you talk to me about the background behind that specific scene? The first bit of research I did was with a woman called Sinead Harrison in Women's Aid, which is a charity in Ireland that looks after women who flee from domestic violence and need help. Um, so through that experience, I realised one of the first things they learn before they're even ready to take steps to leave is that they make a safety box. And in that box will be things like um, a very cheap new phone, a new SIM card with a new phone number, some money if they can photocopies or the original birth certs of the children and they have a code word that they that they say to use for, for with your kids they, they just say find one and then the kids know they just have to get in the car when mommy says that word and how i found black widow was just by asking my nieces at the time who they love as a superhero and at the time my little niece lucy said oh i love black widow because she's crazy about like marvel things and all and there wasn't many obviously female superheroes but that was one of them and i actually had to explain that a lot <laughs> in meetings but thankfully now there's going to be a whole movie out better i don't know why we bothered none of us are going to get to see this gaff sorry guys you need very, very few skills to be involved in a team that'll build a house. What can I do for you? I want to build a house. <sighs> Look, sorry, darling, there's just too many risks for everyone. No harm in asking. Why didn't you ask me? A permanent home. I didn't mean for you to say that. Well, I did. So. Now, Harriet, your character makes a life-changing gift to Sandra, of course. She gives her land in which she can build a house. Do you think this message about community and generosity feels especially relevant now? I'm glad you asked that because I do. I mean, we're witnessing both a revival of community feeling and cohesion mm -hmm. and its opposite. Mm -hmm. We're seeing a lot of division and hatred and I'm feeling a real sort of undertow where, you know, grassroots upwards, we're moving in a different direction and our leaders are out of step. I mean, in this case, she's not a saint. Mm -hmm. She's trying to move on from a tragedy where she lost a child. Mm -hmm. And um, she's sort of, the, the, the land has been rotting there, sort of accusing her of not moving on. And then here comes this perfect um, solution with this woman who's like a daughter to her because her mother was like a, a friend to me. Claire, this film really is a story of resilience. Uh, did you make a conscious decision to give it that kind of positive community driven spirit? I didn't want to portray this woman as a victim. I think with this, when I met anyone that had been through an experience like this, there was almost like a, like I met a woman in a charity shop who worked in a women's aid charity shop who had literally definitely been through all of this herself. And she said, oh, please, 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 will you show a story for once where we see what happens to them when they finally move on? And that, mo that a lot of these women do get out of the situation through their own determination. And I was just determined to see this woman look like a hero, even when she's in the midst of the war front in her home. Um, because I think there's a misunderstanding about all that, you know. And um, I just wanted to show the heroism in that, the quiet determination in those women. Because they're not exactly standing there looking like heroes and like bravely walking forward. It's not. It's all very hush. It's all very slipping under the radar. And 
they are some of the bravest people on the planet. And I just kind of wanted to almost celebrate that in a way. Harriet, what do you feel is significant about this film from a feminist perspective? Well, I think that, you know, domestic abuse crosses all class, all classes and all situations. Mm -hmm. And I think there is a huge unity between the women once they have opened up and once they've shared and not keeping these things to themselves. And as long as you can go somewhere where you can safely do that, which as, as Claire cited, there are quite a lot, there's refuge and there's the one you were talking about in, mm-hmm. in Ireland. And there's, you know, there are places you can go to be safe um, and talk about these things. But one of, the, one of the hardest things is when it's tied up with love. Um, you know, if, mm-hmm. if, your, if your work boss is abusing you, there's a different problem. If you're domestic, your, the love of your life is abusing you, mm-hmm. somebody who you used to love, it's incredibly hard to recognise that things have gone wrong and you feel a failure. And just knowing that so many people are in that position, and particularly, you know, as soon as we got locked down, I, that, because we'd recently made the film, that was where my first thoughts were, oh my God, mm-hmm. supposing you were trapped in a building with the man who was, uh, or the woman, who was making your life hell and frightening your kids and threatening your life. And I just, luckily, there was an awareness of that and organisations that could help were already working on that, but made doubly difficult by COVID, obviously. Mm -hmm. Women can be less class conscious and more kind of, it's much easier for us in a way we haven't, in our culture, we haven't got that kind of inbuilt competitiveness that men have to struggle with. And, you know, it's part of our pride to be able to link up and connect up and form communities and form chains of, of help. That's sort mm-hmm. of part of our DNA. Um, finally, Claire, talk to me a little bit more about playing the role. How did that affect you emotionally after you'd spent so much time writing this piece of work? I, but I felt honoured to take her on because if if it's any way close to what what anyone goes through on that journey, I just, I really admire anyone that does. She is imbued with every single person I met along the way researching the film and and that's that's what's in there it's not just Sandra it's like there's lines there that I had to ring and ask people I'm gonna kind of use what you were saying about this thing (laughs) you know because it's based on like a lot of research and fact as well my own uh, desire as a storyteller is to show sort of visions of what can be because I think now activism is in a whole transition it's not just anger and protest it's it's activism with a vision and it's progressive and it's um, solution orientated and actually coming up with the answers and this kind of step by step journey of building something new together that I hope people kind of get something even just from that. Herself premieres at the London Film Festival on the 8th of October and you can catch it on general release from the 16th. The BFI London Film Festival will be taking place from Wednesday the 7th of October to Sunday the 18th of October. You can find out more and book tickets by going to bfi.org.uk forward slash LFF. Thanks to the BFI for partnering with Girls on Film. The arts, of course, still really need your support, so please support the BFI if you can by giving £5. You can text BFI at home to 70085 and text will cost £5 plus your standard message rate. You've been watching Girls on Film. If you've been affected by the discussions about domestic abuse, then please feel free to contact Refuge. You can find them at refuge.org.uk or call free phone 0808 2000 247. We'll be back on the BFI's YouTube in a fortnight. Meantime, you can check out our audio podcast on the link below the screen right here. See you soon. Let herself do the honours.